So, hello there, and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tanya Bakshi, and this time we're going to be going over the second revision for the integers tutorial that I made a few weeks ago. Now, this is going to be really interesting as we go into a bit more complex stuff, which is multiplication and division, since last time we covered addition and subtraction. So now, as you can see here, we have a little uh, diagram explaining exactly what we've been taught and what we still have to be taught. Uh, so, as you can see in integers, we've already taught you addition and subtraction in part one, and now we're going to be teaching you multiplication and division. Now, you might be thinking that these are simpler than this, and that's exactly why I said, now we're going to be going into the complex stuff. But you're wrong. I agree sometimes in school, uh, like mostly in schools, they do teach you addition and subtraction first, then multiplication and division, but that's because they, there aren't negative and positive numbers both. There's just positive numbers, meaning sometimes these could be considered easier than these. However, when you get negative numbers into the mix, you're looking for a more systematic and foolproof way of doing this stuff. And that's where multiplication and division come in, which is basically a much more uh, systematic way of doing things. Uh, there's one defined set of rules that you have to follow. Uh, and in addition and subtraction, which is much more abstract, basically. So now I'm going to be explaining it to you, and let's get to the drawing board. So as you can see, I'm going to draw a simple question, which is plus 5 times uh, plus 4. Okay, let's just use this as an example. Let's just see here, or actually, now that I think about it, because we want our division to be much simpler, let's use the numbers 6 and 3, okay? Because that'll make our division much simpler. You'll see why in just a minute. So if we use 6 and 3, as you can see, we have 6 times 3, and actually positive 6 times positive 3. Now, you might be thinking, how will we solve this? Well, first of all, we want to look at the numbers and ignore the operators currently. So if we take 6 times 3, just normally, no uh, uh, operators basically, then we get the answer 18. So what we can do is we can write down the answer as 18. But then there's a slight problem, and let me explain what this problem is. And uh, just so that it becomes a little bit easier for us, I am going to make a little bit more gap, because you'll see exactly why in a minute. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down a set of rules that you should also always follow uh, when you are doing multiplication or division with integers, which is if there's a positive or a positive, it'll always come out, or actually a positive or a positive or a negative and a negative, it'll always come out to be a positive. If it is a positive or a negative or negative and a positive, then it'll always come out to be a negative. So essentially, we're saying that if they are the same operators in the question, then it'll come out or a result to be uh, positive. Uh, if it there, if there are different operators, then it will always result in a negative uh, result. So now, if we were to look at this, we have a plus and a plus, and those two are the same. So what does our rule say? Our rule says that this should be a positive number, right there. So as you can see, that's why I was making that little gap, because then we can put in that plus really easily. So now let's just say uh, we have plus 6 times uh, minus 3. How would we go about doing this? Well, we have a plus and a minus. A plus and a minus are not the same, so they conflict with each other, and it becomes a minus. So I can do minus 18 for this answer. OK, now let's do minus 6 times plus 3. What would this be equal to? Let's see this again. Minus and plus. Minus and plus are not the same. So what does that give us? Negative. So this means it would be a negative 18 here. Lastly, we have one more question, which is negative 6 times negative 3. Now the answer will obviously be negative 18. Yeah, so that was all for multiplication, but wait just one minute. This was just to fool you to see if you knew the answer. This is actually supposed to be positive. I know your instinct will say that 
negative and negative makes a negative because they're both negatives. How could it make a positive? But if you follow the rule of multiplication, then this has to be a positive because they're both similar. So now that we're done this, uh, you should know the basic rule and you should be able to do it with division. So now you'll see exactly why I chose 6 and 3 for our numbers. Watch this. And so now all I need to do is put division symbols here. And then all I need to do is put 2's in these because 6 divided by 3 is 2. Now if you look at it, this is the exact, this is, these are real correct answers. And the reason is 6 divided by 3, that's equal to 2. A plus and a plus, they're similar, that comes out to a positive, so it's positive 2. Plus, minus, that becomes negative. 6 divided by 3, that's 2, so negative 2. Minus and a plus, minus, 6 and 3, 2. So negative 2 again. Then minus and a minus comes out to be a plus because they're similar again. And 6 and 3, uh, 6 divided by 3 is 2, so positive 2. So that's exactly why I said that this is actually very, very simple if you use the numbers 6 and 3. Because then you only need to erase the operators and the answers. That's it. And so this is a really good way of demonstrating how this rule actually works because the same operators are being used and you always get the same operator result no matter if you're using multiplication or division that just shows that we're actually using the rule. Now, let's just go into it a bit more. Let's say you were asked a question like this. Okay, let's look at this for a sec. We have a question which is Let's just say, oh, I don't know, negative positive 3 times positive negative 4. What would this be equal to? Well, what we have to do is just like in fractions, but not really, you always simplify fractions. Well, we were going to simplify this question quite literally using this very rule. So in order to simplify, we take this part, okay? And then we say, okay, how are we uh, taking this? We have a, a minus and a plus. These are not similar, so we get a negative. So the, the first number is actually just negative 3. Okay, now let's look at plus and minus. These are again not the same, meaning we get negative output. Meaning this is times negative 4 which looks very similar to you because I just taught you how to do this literally a few minutes ago. Now if I say equal to, you should see that negative and negative, what does that equal? Positive, because I just taught you that, 3 times 4, 12. So, the, in theory, the answer should be positive 12, and this answer is correct. Now that we have that out of the way, we can easily just erase this question mark and say that we know this question and the answer to this is plus 12. I'll just give you one more example really quickly uh, and this time let's just use division since you know the rule. So I'm just going to erase this part. Okay, now let's do this. Let's do something like um, plus um, minus 6 divided by minus minus 2 is equal to. Now let's uh, simplify this again. As you can see, we have plus and minus, so that would uh, end up to be a negative result, meaning we have a negative 6 here. Now we have a division symbol, of course, and then we have two negatives. As we know, that comes out to be a positive answer. And because it comes out to be a positive answer, negative 6 divided by positive 2, which is equal to, again, I just taught this to you a few minutes ago. Let's look at this. Minus plus, not the same. That means we get a minus result. Now, if we divide, we see 6 divided by 2 is 3, so we just say 3, and we say the operator is negative. It's that simple, and we can again say that we know how to solve this sort of a question. Now that I've given you two examples, I think you should be quite fluent with it, 
And yeah, that was really all you had to learn in this part of integers. And yeah, this was the last part in the series. Uh, if you do want some more information, uh, maybe you can just leave it in the comments and I'll take a look at that. Uh, you can even email me at tagimania at gmail.com. Uh, my email will be down in the description. If you have any troubles, it uh, will be down in the description so you can check it out. You can email me. Uh, and please like the video if you liked it. Uh, and also subscribe if you're new to my channel to get all the latest videos that I release. And that'll be it. Goodbye.